scientists. Welcome back. I haven't seen you in a few days. Well, I hope you're ready to do something fun today because I have an interesting experiment for the end of this lesson, okay? Um, so let's think back to last week. Last week, we talked about another kind of animal. Do you remember what it was? Animals that are pets. Yes, like a dog or a cat or a fish or an iguana. Maybe you have one of those types of pets. And we talked lots about those animals, right? We sure did. Well, today we're going to shift and talk about a different kind of animal. This type of animal is called an insect. Can you say insect for me? Insect. Yes, excellent job. Now, insect, it's like a fancy word for bug, okay? So, insect is like a bug. Lots of little creepy crawly bugs. Ooh, or interesting little buggers. Yeah. So, we will talk about different type of bugs. So that is the point of today's lesson. We will identify different insects by name. We will also explore the life cycle of a butterfly. Because did you know a butterfly is an insect? What? I didn't know that. Oh, I thought that was pretty neat when I learned. Okay, so first, let's talk about what scientists do before we get started, okay? So, scientists, we are going to ask questions. Hmm, okay. We are also going to make observations. Now, making observations with insects, this one's interesting because we really, really look at the characteristics on these insects and learn lots about them, okay? And we will also make predictions. So making predictions is going to come into play later on when we do our experiment at the end, okay? And scientists also record their findings. So maybe you want to make an insect journal. Maybe you can draw and write about all the different kinds of insects you have found around your home. Maybe outside, maybe at the park. You can find insects all over, okay? So, Let's talk about some insects. I'm going to show you a picture of an insect and I want to see if you can name it for me. Okay? So let's take a look. Ready? What kind of insect is this? A bee. Yes. We can call it a bumblebee. Yeah. Very good. So bees like to buzz around and land on flowers and they get pollen to take back to their hive, right? And bees make honey. Isn't that neat? Did you know bees make honey? Oh, I'm so thankful for bees. Honey is delicious. So everybody one more time, say bee. Yes, a bee is an insect. It has one, two, three, and then on the opposite side, there's three more, four, five, six. So the bee has six legs and look at these little things sticking out of its head. Those are antennas. Yeah. And bees have wings. Very good. Let's put the bee up on the board. Have you ever seen a bee? Yeah. I see bees outside. They like to swim, um, fly around and land on the flowers. That's why I try and be careful whenever I see flowers around. So I don't want to mess with a bee. Okay, let's take a look at another insect. Are you ready? Can you tell me what this insect is? It's a ladybug. Very good. Everybody say ladybug. Good. Now, here's the fun thing. A ladybug doesn't have to be a girl. It could be a boy ladybug too. It just has the name ladybug. So, ladybugs could be red. They could be yellow, they could be orange, but they usually have these black spots on them too, and their head is black, all right? Ladybugs have wings too, like bees, and they fly around. Very good. Okay, let's put the ladybug up on the board. You ever seen a ladybug? Yeah. 
I've held a ladybug in my hand before. It just crawls around and then flies away. Okay, so we have a bee and a ladybug. Here's another insect. Let's see if you know this one. This is called an ant. Everybody say ant. Yes, very good. So you might see ants on the ground crawling around looking for food outside. Maybe somebody dropped a piece of their sandwich at the picnic and the ants are coming around to find that food to take back to their home, right? So look, ants, they have antenna just like the bees do. Ooh. They have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and then way back there, six. Okay, they have six legs also. But if you look, they have three parts to their bodies. Look, they have the head, this middle part, and then the very back. Hmm. Bumblebee didn't have that. Well, yeah, maybe it does, I guess. But the ladybug just has one big body, right? Interesting. Did you know ants live in an ant hill? Yes, and then they tunnel down underground and have all these tunnels underneath the dirt. Yeah, they are hard workers. They really are. All right, so we'll add the ant up on the board now. Okay. Lots of insects so far. Here is another insect. Let's see if you know what it's called, okay? What is this? Green, he's got really big back legs. Jumps or hops. It's a grasshopper, very good. So if you look, the grasshopper has six legs too. Look, one, two, that big one, three, and on the other side, four, there it is, five and six. Hey, now, unlike the ant, but close to the ladybug, grasshoppers sometimes have wings. Yeah, yeah. They also have antennas. Ooh, I wonder what those antennas are for. Hmm, that's an interesting question. So have you ever seen a grasshopper just like hopping around? Oh my goodness, it was funny. One time my dog went walking through the grass and all of a sudden you, we saw like 10 or 20 grasshoppers all jump at the same time. And my dog was like, what is it? <laughs> grasshoppers are pretty cool to watch. I like how they hop. Okay. Grasshoppers. All right, here's one that I'm pretty sure we've all seen. If you ever sit outside with some food, there's this bug that's just gonna bother you. Oh, it's gonna come bothering you. Do you know what this one's called? A fly. Say it for me, fly. Yes, very good. So, flies also have those six legs, one, two, three, and then the back four, can't really see it, five, and six. All right, but look, flies have wings. Yes, flies have wings also. Excellent. You ever seen a fly? Yeah. Oh, there's this song that makes me think of every time when a fly comes buzzing around and I'm like, leave me alone. I sing that, shoo fly, don't bother me. Shoo fly, don't bother me. Song. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, but I'm just like, leave me alone, fly. Fly. So a fly is also an insect. I'm noticing a pattern here. A lot of these insects have six legs. Hmm. Okay. This one, oh, this is one of my favorites because I think they're really pretty. Do you know what this insect Yes, it's the dragonfly. So it's my favorite because of all the different colors I've seen on dragonflies. Sometimes I see bright blue dragonflies like this one. Sometimes I see bright green dragonflies. Sometimes they have blues and greens mixed in. I just like how colorful they are. But let's see, do dragonflies also have six legs? Let's get close up, let's see. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Dragonflies have six legs too. That must be a thing about insects. Insects have six legs. Hmm. And so far, they're all kind of small too, right? They're not big like a cat or giant like a whale. Hmm. Let's see if you know this next insect. Ooh, you might. This one's pretty cool. Ready? Take a look. You know what this insect is? All green all over. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, six legs again. Look at the antennas. Mm -hmm. ah, this is a praying mantis. Everybody say it. Praying mantis. Yeah, very good. So these praying mantises, like, I think they are just brilliant. They're this bright green color, right? So if they're sitting in trees, they look like green leaves. So can the birds find them and try to eat them? Not so easily, because they blend in. That's called camouflage. Very neat, huh? All right, so one more time, a praying mantis. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Move so you can't see that one. Let's move over here. The next insect I want to talk about is the butterfly. Ugh, butterflies can be very pretty colors. Okay, so I printed out a picture that has lots of different colored butterflies that we can take a look at. Not all butterflies have to be orange and black. So let's take a look. Here's a blue butterfly. Let's see, there's some green. What else? Oh. There's red butterflies, and they all have different patterns. They don't all have to look exactly the same like that orange butterfly, right? Okay, so that takes us into the life of a butterfly. So we've talked about the life cycle before, right? Yes, like with the chicken, okay? So, and the, and the flower, the plant, yes. So a life cycle is basically the whole life and how it keeps repeating over and over and over again. There's like the baby and then the little kid and then the older kid and then the grown up and then the grown up has a baby again. So it happens with people, with flowers, with reproduction. They make, they make more of themselves, okay? So in this life cycle of the butterfly, um, there's something a little bit different. Like, there's a big, big change. And this big, big change is called metamorphosis. Can you say that? Metamorphosis. 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 Hey, there you go, scientists using those big words. Excellent job. Okay, so this is why butterflies are amazing. They don't start life as a butterfly. What? Kind of like the frog, they look different when they're first born. But unlike the frog, they completely transform into something different. So let's take a look, okay? So, first in the life cycle of a butterfly, you're going to have an egg. A female butterfly will lay an egg. Let me get, I have pictures. So, you might find butterfly eggs in a leaf. Yeah, look at all those little eggs. That butterfly was much of that Okay. And then, the leaf, or sorry, not the leaf. The egg is going to hatch, and a caterpillar will come out. A little caterpillar. Teeny tiny little caterpillar. Now, when that little caterpillar comes out, it is going to be hungry. Yes. So it's going to eat and 
eat, and eat, all different things that it can find. All right, and then after it eats a lot, like leaves and stuff, it's gonna get bigger. Yes, it's gonna grow bigger and fatter. <sighs> That's a, a plump caterpillar right there. Well, then the caterpillar, once it's, it's all that food and it's, it's a little bit older, it's gonna start making that big change we talked about. Mmm. So it is going to wrap itself up in a, a cocoon. And it's, it's gonna be like attached to a, usually like a little twig or um, a, a part of a plant that it can hang from. So we call this cocoon a chrysalis. Say it for me, chrysalis. There you go, very good. So basically, it's wrapped up really tight like a burrito in a little shell, and it sits there for a few weeks. And while it's inside, it kind of has like a costume change. It totally looks different when it comes out. It's no longer this little caterpillar. Once that uh, caterpillar is done changing inside the chrysalis, when it comes out again, breaks free, as a butterfly, what? Caterpillar, a little crawly thing with a bunch of legs, right? That just kind of scooches, scooch, scooch, scooch. Somehow grows up to be a butterfly with wings. That is very different. So um, a baby butterfly does not look like a grown up, right? Because a baby butterfly technically isn't even a butterfly. It's a caterpillar. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Like people don't do that. People, babies are like tiny humans, tiny grown-ups, And then they grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Huh. Wow. Butterflies are pretty awesome, aren't they? Oh yeah, they are. Excellent. Okay, so let's talk about those stages of the life cycle one more time, okay? So we have the egg. Right? Make a little egg for me. Just like pretend like you're holding it. Egg. Teeny tiny. Okay, egg. Next thing is gonna be the caterpillar. So what you're gonna do, take your finger over your palm your other hand and just kind of squish, squish, squish caterpillar. Because it that's how it, it, it moves. It just kind of like slides on through. Yeah. All right, caterpillar. So first is an egg, then it's a caterpillar, okay? Do you remember what that little cocoon thing is called? A chrysalis, there you go. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our, our, our two hands, we're gonna put them together like we're cupping something inside, like we're hiding it, and you see the shape that it makes? You know, kinda looks like a little chrysalis, right there, yeah? So chrysalis, one more time, so you can get a really close up look at it chrysalis. Good. So first, the egg. Next, the caterpillar, right? And after that caterpillar gets even bigger, next we have the chrysalis. Very good. And after the chrysalis, what pops out? A beautiful butterfly. Yes. That is a monarch butterfly. So what we'll do for a butterfly, you're going to take your hands, okay, you're going to kind of like hook your thumbs together, oh, this way, sorry, so keep your hands facing you, so you you know, your palms are looking at you, okay, cross them, yeah, so your hands kind of make an X, and then hook your thumbs together, so they're like best friends holding hands, and then you just kind of flap, flap, woo, butterfly, butterfly, there you go. All right, so egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. There you go, excellent job. Okay, so now when I was thinking about the butterfly and all those different colors, I was like, well, how can I make my own butterfly? Huh. So I found this really neat experiment, okay? And you don't need a lot of stuff. You might even already have these things at home. So what you would need is a coffee filter. 
Maybe some, uh, maybe somebody in your house, your grown-ups drink coffee. You just need a coffee filter. Okay, one coffee filter. You need some markers. You can make more than one if you want, or you just pick your favorite color. I'm gonna do purple today. Okay. So you're gonna take that coffee filter and you're going to try and spread it out so it's flat. Yeah, so it's flat like that. And you're gonna put it down on the table and you're going to draw a circle here in the middle. You can kind of see where there's already a circle shape. So you draw a big circle here around that. Inside, I'm gonna draw it. Okay, let me get mine. Okay, and I didn't make it a really skinny line. I made it kind of a thicker line just to see if that'll help I see a little bit better. Okay, so I just drew my purple circle and it's still kind of in the, in the circle part of the coffee filter. See? Yeah? Okay. But I didn't fill it all the way in into the very center. Don't fill it into the very center. You don't want that to happen. Okay. You're also going to need a small cup with a little bit of water in it. Okay. So it's not totally full. I just have a little bit. All right. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take that coffee filter we're gonna fold it in half. So instead of it being a circle, now it's just half of a circle, right? Okay, so it's like a semicircle. Then you're gonna take that semicircle and you're gonna fold it in half again. So now it just kind of looks like a cone. See that? There you go. Okay, so now here, when you're looking at the coffee filter, you're gonna have one, two, three, four pieces, right? So I want you to grab one, two, three pieces and tuck your fingers in so that last piece is still there. And that makes kind of like a little funnel, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that, hold it like that so it's still got that little opening part, right? And you're gonna put it into your cup. Now, you do not want the marker part to touch the water. Don't do that. That'll mess it up, okay? You just want the tip, the very tip, to come down into the water and touch. So like this. See how it's just touching right there? And then it's just gonna sit there perfectly, right? See that? Now, before anything starts to happen, I want you to make a prediction. What's gonna happen to my coffee filter in the water? Will will something happen to the color on on the uh, the coffee filter? Will something happen to that marker? What do you think is going to happen? I'll give you that hint. I'll give you a hint. Something is going to change. Okay. So remember, scientists. I just asked your question. What's going to happen to my coffee filter when it gets wet and there's marker on it? Okay. You need to make your prediction, okay? Now, this normally takes about 20 minutes to, for the, the full effect to, uh, to finish, okay? So I have one that I already started before the lesson just so that you can see it because we don't wanna wait a whole 20 minutes, okay? Um, but when you try this at home, when you try this, definitely wait 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes at the very longest, okay? So, do you have your prediction about what you think will happen when you put that coffee filter down in the water? Hmm. Maybe it'll make a rainbow. Maybe it'll clean off the coffee filter, you know? Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll wash away all the marker. Huh. Oh, this is an extra one, by the way. This isn't the same one I drew on. I wonder what's going to happen. All right, so let's take a look at the one I already started, okay? You have your prediction already? Do you, do you think you know what's gonna happen? Okay, I'm excited to show you. So you ready? All right, so let me try and see if I can do this. I've already had mine started, so here you can see the tip of it is just sitting in the water, right? Okay, but what you don't see yet is that all that water is getting soaked up, kind of like a sponge or a rag, right? And when the water soaks up into the marker, it starts to move the color. 
So now instead of the marker being down here at the bottom where I drew the circle, it's kind of moved up to the top. But remember, I used purple. So why do I have blue and pink? Hmm. Very interesting. So that's what's going to happen after 20 or 30 minutes of your coffee filter sitting in the water. That is so neat. Okay. Now, what you're going to do next might get a little teeny bit messy. Okay. Not much. And it's really easy to clean up. Markers are washable. So you're going to take the coffee filter out, out of the water. Okay. And I, I have a little plate here, just lay it out on. And you're going to open it up, okay? So you can see the whole circle again. And look what's happened. Whoop. Look at what has happened to the coffee filter. The purple isn't just in the center anymore, like when I first did it. It looks like all the colors moved to the edges. What? And there's different colors, but it's really wet. So what you have to do is lay that flat, okay? Lay it flat, and you're gonna let it sit. It needs about an hour to dry, okay? So you want that to dry out. Now, I happen to have another one that I tried last night. It doesn't have, the colors are not as pretty as that one, but you can still see that the colors move to the outer part, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this. Because we don't want to just do the experiment and then not have it anymore, right? And just throw it away. No, we're going to make a butterfly. So I have my coffee filter. Another thing I had to get was a pipe cleaner, okay? I just cut a pipe cleaner in half. All right, so what you do, you take the coffee filter and basically you want to squish it down. One part, like the top, squish it down to the middle and then squish the bottom part up to the, the middle also. So we have two little parts on each side. Kind of looks like wings, right? You'll take your coffee filter and you're going to thread it up in between those two, oops, those two wing parts. Kind of like this. Okay. And then we'll twist it so that it stays still. Twist it. Here we go. And now we have a butterfly. I can even take the antennas and curl them a little bit. There we go. Butterfly. And I had another one that I made with blue instead of purple. You ready? Butterflies. So there you go. We learned about insects today and the amazing changing butterfly, right? The butterfly that has metamorphosis that changes it completely. And then we had a fun experiment. And after the experiment, we get this cool butterfly craft. Super fun. So I hope you guys can try this on your own, okay? Definitely see if you can make some butterflies. You can make a butterfly of every single color if you want, okay? See what happens to the, the marker. See how the color changes, okay? It's really neat to see that. So basically, going back really quick, when I was asking about why is there pink and blue in my purple, that's because purple is made from red and blue being mixed, or perhaps a dark pink and blue being mixed together. We talked about that way, way back when we were doing color mixing. You remember? Yes. Okay, so I hope you have the chance to try this experiment out on your own. I think I already said that, but hey, I'm going to say it again because that was awesome. All right, and go exploring for insects. See what you can find. Because I promise you, if you look outside, they're almost everywhere, okay? All right, friends, you have a fabulous rest of your day, and I will see you back next time, okay? Bye, guys!